Are you ready to receive God's word? Are you ready to receive God's word? Say, I am ready. My spirit is ready. My heart is ready. Ready to hear from God. Ready to receive from God. In Jesus' name. Amen. To all our first timers, you're much, much, much welcome. If you're seated near anybody and it is their first time, make sure you smile at them. If you are able to smile at the Chinese during Nam, please smile at our first timers. If it is your first time, please just do this, like the Queen of England. Ah, you're welcome. Now, these people are not mad. They are actually very normal. They are just being, being human beings. Yeah, you know, dead things don't react. Dead things don't grow. Dead things don't move. They don't make noise. So when you hear noise, you know it is a sign of living beings. <laughs> now, I don't know about this one. But somehow, I also pastor him. How I ended up pastoring him, God knows. I don't choose the people I pastor. God chooses them. You know, the Bible says that no one comes to the Father except the Lord draws them. So these are the people that God has drawn. And I'm happy. Amen. Amen. This morning, we want to talk about Thanksgiving. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful to God that we are here. I'm grateful to God who has kept us well, who has protected us against accidents, healed us of diseases, sicknesses, who has preserved our families, who has preserved my son, who has preserved my wife, who has preserved our parents, our siblings. So I believe it is okay to, for me to share about Thanksgiving. You know, living through life, you may not find so many reasons to give thanks. And sometimes it's not because there is no reason for giving thanks, but simply because this one thing that you don't like or you don't enjoy might be happening and it overshadows all the many reasons all the good things that are happening that you should be thankful for praise the name of the living God I've heard of stories of people who go to sleep and in the middle of the night they cannot breathe just like that someone just stops breathing and they struggle with their breath but if you are able to go to sleep and wake up normally Okay, some of you wake up screaming, but that should stop today in Jesus' name. What did you dream? This amen, this amen here sounds like on their behalf. Who has told you that you should? <laughs> uh, so sometimes because of the things that happen we may easily find no reason to give thanks to God but there are many reasons for you to give thanks do you have a reason to give thanks yes. do you feel free to share with your neighbor something that God has done for you maybe this week come on talk to someone if you are alone may, I'm not going to preach unless each one of you has talked to someone Share with somebody, tell them what God has done for you. 
share with somebody. Peter is not talking to any. Peter has made up his mind. He is not talking to anybody. Peter, Peter. Yeah. No, come on, come on, come on. Have you shared? Have you shared? Faye, have you shared? She said, I had to. No, 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 no. You say the thing. You, you say the thing. Faith here got COVID. And she was not okay at all. But he, she's here smiling, looking good. Isn't that a reason to give thanks? Hallelujah. So we want to talk about thanksgiving. And uh, recently my, my spiritual father, Apostle Moses Mokisa, gave a word and said that the first three months of this year will be months of supernatural things happening. Breakthroughs are going to happen. Miracles are going to happen. And uh, as those things are going to happen, they are going to be unlocking thanksgiving. You are going to receive a testimony that is outstanding. Oh, yes. Praise the name of the living God. Something good is going to happen in your life and you will not be able to hold back, but instead to give thanks. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 19. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. Praise the name of the living God. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. The Bible says, Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. Let us begin from, um, from verse 18. Verse 18 says, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents, meaning he would rescue those who were taken into captivity, and have mercy on his dwelling places, his towns, his cities. The city shall be built upon its own mound, and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. Then out of them, now you know a city is not a city until it is inhabited by people, right? Yes. Now he says, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. So with me, out of us, out of us. Shall, proceed shall proceed thanksgiving. Look, um, I don't know about trees, whether they give thanks. I don't know about animals. Have you found a monkey giving thanks? And you were able to tell whether it gives thanks. I, I, I don't know. Eh? You stand up and show us. <laughs> but I know about human beings. Praise the name of the living God. I know about human beings. And the Bible says that out of you and me shall proceed thanksgiving say out of me, out of me. say out of me, out of me. Shall, proceed thanksgiving. shall proceed thanksgiving you know there are so many people in this world who out of them you will be surprised the things that come out of them and as you listen to the things they say you will understand that they are actually ungrateful they are actually selfish they actually have nothing good about life have you sat in a taxi and your neighbor was just and you're wondering but it's not yet even 10 seconds that I'm in the taxi and they're looking into the window and then you're thinking it is about you then you realize it's not actually about you but they are just angry, disappointed, discouraged, confused. But even just as anger and vulgar words and all this meanness proceeds out of the 
out of people. The Bible says concerning the people of God, thanksgiving will proceed. Amen. I pray for you this week that instead of complaints, thanksgiving will proceed out of your mouth. That instead of worrying, thanksgiving will proceed out of you. That instead of depression and stress, thanksgiving will proceed out of you. May the Lord give you a reason this week to give thanks. May the Lord do you something good that will cause you to burst out in praise and worship. Amen. That you will seek out for your phone to call somebody telling them, see what the Lord has done. See how God has blessed me. See how God has healed me. See what the Lord has done. I'm going to praise his name. And now we'll na na. I'm gonna praise His name. Hey. Amen. Hey. I pray for you that this week a miracle will of, will happen in your life. A miracle of finances will happen in your life. A miracle of healing will happen in your life. Something good will happen at your home, and you will test and give glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ because this is the will of God this is what God wants you to do he says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry to make merry is to make a shout of joy to make merry is to worship. To make merry is to praise. Is to burst out in praise. And then he says, And as you praise God, He says, As you give thanks, It is not just going to end with you. It is going to provoke God to do something. He says it will provoke Him to multiply you. To multiply your finances, to multiply your joy, to multiply your peace, to multiply your happiness, to multiply your relationships. Not boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You cannot have two boyfriends. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying he's going to multiply you according to the scriptures. According to his plan. For the Bible says he has good plans for us. No plans to destroy us. But plans to give us a future. Plans to give us an expected end. Oh, yes. Say I believe in God. Believe. He will multiply me. He will increase me. I know my God. is taking me to another level. He's introducing me to new realms of joy, to new realms of peace, to new realms of provision, to new realms of goodness. He says, and as you praise him, as you worship him, as you tell of his goodness, he says, it will provoke his heart. It will the angelic it will provoke his hand to get involved in that business that looked small to get involved in that brain that seemed not to understand things and the Lord will increase you in wisdom and he will multiply you in understanding and he will multiply you in favor he says I will multiply them and he says as he multiplies you losses will not be mentioned he says and they shall not diminish meaning it is a, not a life of going backwards but it is a life of moving forward see what thanksgiving does thanksgiving provokes God to increase you and there is no end to that increase because there is no diminishing so in the economy of God, we don't talk about diminishing returns. 
we talk about increase we talk about multiplication you know the disciples at some point Jesus told them do you have any bread to feed the people and they said no no there is nothing and they said try to find something and they said yeah oh well there is something but what is this there are only five loaves and three fish and what is it among so many I can tell you that thing which you thought was small to God is not small for the Bible says a little one shall become a thousand and a strong one shall become a strong nation what you think is small give it to God and see what the Lord can do and Jesus said bring bring the loaves bring the fish and the Bible says when he had given thanks the bread was not plied when when he had given thanks so for those of you who have not cultivated a lifestyle of thanksgiving you're missing out on multiplication you're missing out are you following me he says and I will multiply them and they shall not diminish and I will also glorify them. To glorify is to change class. Are, are you listening? To glorify is to do what? To change class. Where have you been eating from? Hmm? Huh? You know, you know, in Mutungo, there is that place. Mamani. Don't mention the name. It is a change of class. It is a change of identity. Meaning God is interested in changing your identity. You see, the word glory means splendor. Means light. Meaning if you were not shining, when you give thanks, it provides provokes light it provokes God to cause light to shine on you beauty to shine on you splendor to be revealed out of you the Bible says and he shall give them beauty for ashes you know ashes are not nice but it says when you give thanks where there are ashes he shall instead give you beauty David says, beautiful in all situations. Beautiful in all situations. Meaning it doesn't matter where you get caught up. God can produce beauty out of the situation. Thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. And he says, as he glorifies you, as he changes your class, he says, you will not be small. Say, I will not be small. Say, I refuse to be small. I refuse to be little. I refuse to despise me. I refuse anybody to despise me. He says, you shall not be small. Meaning God wants you to be big. Now, I'm not talking about big in whatever, but uh, even if you became big that way, it is okay. Because, you know, there was a time I was so small and I wanted to put on some weight. And I couldn't. Oh, yes but even that God can do but in this case he's talking about your identity before the world how people see you meaning you will enter a place and you will matter 
you will not be ignored favor will be upon you they will call you if you sit behind they will call you to sit at the front desk they will welcome you to sit with the honorables they will welcome you to sit in the places of honor in the places of respect dignitaries Isaiah says Kings shall come to your rising. Meaning as he glorifies you, you are not just going to no place. You are going to a place where the kings are. The influentials are. The people who run the economies are. Now if you are the, with the people who run the economy, what does that mean? You've joined the group that runs the economy. I'm talking about a life of power. A life of influence where your bosses who used to scold at you now they speak to you like they are speaking to a fellow worker a colleague I don't know about you but for me that has been my life that is why I, I gave up trying to find jobs I gave up trying to find employment because somehow somewhere we are going to end up being badass. And sometimes that can affect productivity. Because then you will not, sometimes you will find it hard to instruct me. It has happened. My first boss, we ended up having two companies in the same company. The second one, I ended up running his company and him running mine. One was called Ivan and another one was called Andrew. I'm talking about people with blood. I'm saying God is going to introduce you to places and they will see that you have the same potential that they have and probably you even have an advantage of the Holy Spirit which they don't have. Praise the name of the living God. Do you remember the story of Joseph? The Bible says, and the king said to Joseph, you will have control over all the kingdom. My word, your word will be my word. But the guy had gotten into the country as a slave. As a prisoner. Meaning it doesn't matter where you are. God can still work something bigger than your mind can comprehend. Tell your neighbor, he's a God of favor. So, when we talk about thanksgiving, thanksgiving comes out of us. It does what comes. There is nothing like I've given thanksgiving. No. It must come out. When the Lord does for you anything, you must testify. It must come out. Thanksgiving is not thanksgiving until it comes out. For those of you who have had healthy parents, when they did for you anything good, because I know there are some of us who may have grown up in abusive homes where uh, maybe your parents or your guardians were mean to you. But irrespective, even those, I believe they did for you something and it was good. And you were supposed to do what? To say thank you. How about they give you school fees and you're like, They'll be like, come back here. Are you the one who makes the money? <laughs> that is if he's not my father. Because my father will tell you, put the head under the chair and the legs outside. And then you will have the test of your life. Thanksgiving must do what? Come out. It might proceed out of you. You cannot be seated behind there and God is doing things that you're like, hmm, you people, you don't know. As you're looking at me here, hmm, me I will not tell you, but God is doing. Hmm. I am smiling, smiling because God is working, but you're not saying it. 
you're not saying it there are so many of us God has done for you things but nobody in this church even knows you know if 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 I tell them some of them will feel jealous who has said some of them will lose we, we, we will feel bad who has said they will feel bad and does it matter if they feel bad? I thought it matters more because when you give thanks, it provokes God to even do more. So if they should feel jealousy, let them feel jealousy until they can no longer feel jealous. Why? Because every time you give thanks, God is going to do more and more and more and more. Tell your neighbor, make up your mind to give thanks. Make up your mind to give thanks. So when we talk about thanksgiving, we are talking about a voice activated thanksgiving. Tell your neighbor, it is voice activated. There must be a voice to your thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I've said, produces increase and multiplication. And it releases glory. Now, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to 2. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to 2. One of the effects, I want to talk about the effects of our praise and thanksgiving. The effects of our praise. And the first effect is that it is a weapon against threat. Praise and thanksgiving is a weapon against threat. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1 to 2. And it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Verse 2. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you beyond the sea from Syria, and they are in Hazazon Tama, which is Enged. So there was an attack coming for Jehoshaphat. His life was under threat. If it was a job, it was under threat. If it was health, it was under threat. It was a rela- if it was a relationship, it was under threat. And the threat was bigger than Jehoshaphat could contain. Have you been in those moments where something was happening, something was about to happen, and you were so scared because you did not know if you would be able to contain the pain? This was the situation of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was faced with a major threat that could destroy the entire nation of Israel. That could destroy his entire kingship. That could destroy the entire cities. Kings of multitudes of troops, troops, armies were coming after him. I can tell you God has never said that challenges will not come our way. It's not in the scriptures. He actually says, a thousand shall fall on thy side and ten thousand on the other side. Meaning enemies will attack. But the difference is, as they come to attack, the effect or the or, or, or the, their goal will not be achieved. So he says, a thousand shall fall on thy side, ten thousand on the other side, but it shall not come near your dwelling. Meaning it shall not achieve its purposes. He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He does not say that no weapon will not be formed. No, he does not say that no weapon will not be formed. He says they will be formed. Enemies will rise up against you. Things will come up to attack you. How David says, when the enemy came up to eat my flesh, he did not say 
you protected me so much that no enemy even came up. No. So challenges may come. Problems may come your way. Challenges are common to every man. And so you should never be surprised when challenges do what? Come. Because they are bound to do what? To come. As long as the devil is still there, as long as we still make the wrong decisions, as long as demons still exist, as long as there are still human beings with different kinds of feelings, good feelings and bad feelings, good attitudes and bad attitudes, challenges will come. As long as we still want to eat some chips and chicken, challenges will do what? Will come. Praise the name of the living God. Let us go to verse 3. And let us see his response to the threat, which is supposed to be our response. Verse 3. And Jehoshaphat did what? He feared. Has any of us ever feared? If you've never feared, I fear you. <laughs> and Jehoshaphat did what? He feared. But the challenge is, for many of us, when we fear, we instead give up. The Bible says, in the face of fear, he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. But when many of us are scared, when many of us are filled up with fear, what do we do? We go to bed and cry and cry and cry. Others go to the bar and drink. But I can tell you, you will drink a hundred bottles and you will come back to face the same challenge. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Others, when they are scared, when they are traumatized, they call their boyfriend. Now they want to go and sleep over. I'm scared. I'm scared. Please come. Are you there? Where did you put the key? You know someone. What are those things that you do? What are those things that you do when you're scared? Others resort to eating. Others resort to eating. They will eat and eat paka kuhuli rabovi. Others end up in depression. They just give in all their emotion. And then they stress. And they choose to worry. Yvonne, is everything okay? The way Yvonne is looking at me like, hmm. Wagambe chivos. What are those things that you do when you're scared? When you're faced with a challenge, you do what? Many of us cry. Many of us, others will go to smoke. They will be like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. so they choose to go high. But I can tell you, it doesn't matter how high you go. As you go high, before you know it, you will land and you will land through the challenge again. That is why we always tell people, look, if you want to get high, I can tell you there is no high like the Holy Ghost high. There is no high like the most high. So you better run to the most high. Because those leaves will make it worse. Yeah, you multiply your problems instead. Before you know it, we are tying you with ropes and say, up to Butabika. And then you end up getting angry with everybody. How could you bring me to Butabika? 
fear fear and sometimes it's the fear of the unknown haven't you ever been there and you're scared but if they ask you what are you scared of I don't know I, I, I just feel like something bad is about to happen and did you know it is scripture can I show you something of the, of the hooks Proverbs but this does not validate that kind of fear Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 12, chapter 22 and verses 3 am I teaching are you following Proverbs chapter 22 and verses 23 Hey, verses, chapter 22, verses 3. The Bible says, A prudent man does what? Foresees evil. So it is possible for you to be seated there and then you have this sense of the devil wants to attack. We call it discernment rather than the fear of the unknown. Praise the name of the living God. Yeah. Instead of talking about, I, I am just scared. No. Please understand when fear comes, understand that it is an attack. But it is not supposed to bring you into a panic mood. Of no, I don't know. Uh, uh, is it my... Then you start calling everybody. Mommy, are you okay? Dad, are you okay? You instead empowering the fear. The Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Meaning in the face of fear, you should still be able to be sober and think right. So he says, a prudent man foresees evil. And what does he do? He hides himself. Meaning he goes to the place of protection. He seeks protection. But they're simple. I'm scared. And they, all they can do about it is, I am scared. They do nothing about it. And the Bible says, those ones who are simply taken over by fear, in the end, they are punished. So being fearful is not abnormal being being first with fear is not abnormal but what do you do when you are first with fear praise the name of the living god for jehoshaphat the bible says he made up his mind to do what to seek god tell your neighbor in the face of fear make up your mind to seek god Verses 3 of 2 Corinthians, chapter 20, verses 4. Verses 4. So, all Judah gathered together to seek help from God. Some people seek help from witches. Others seek help from stones. Others seek help from their money until all their money is burnt. But Jehoshaphat gathered together all Judah to seek help from God. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Jehoshaphat feared when he got the news. But instead of running, he sought divine help. May this, no matter what happens this week, may you seek divine help. May you run to the place of prayer. May you run to the word of God. And sometimes, in such moments, because you are faced with fear, don't isolate yourself. One of the greatest tricks of the devil 
is the trick of isolating you. Many people when they are faced with challenges, that's when they stop going to church. Why? Because they are faced with a challenge. That's when they stop hanging around with their friends. But when you're faced with fear, that is the time to go to church. So that you can find other people who can help build up your faith. Who can help you see God. Praise the name of the living God. Can we see something in the book of Acts? Acts chapter 4. Am I teaching? Are you home? Or you've gone to your home? (laughs) Acts chapter 4. And let us read verse 18. Now this is the story of Peter and John when they were arrested. The Bible says verse 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus verses 21 so when they had further threatened them what happened to them they were threatened when they had further threatened them they let them go finding no way of punishing them because of the people since They all glorified God for what had been done. Verses 23. And being let go, after being threatened, they did not go into isolation. Instead, they went to their own company. The question is, do you have a company? Do you have companions? And what kind of companions do you have? when you're threatened some of us have the kind of friends who instead when you share with them anything they just draw out even the little faith that was remaining they are just like oh my god what did you say what what did you say I know of a friend who also went through the same situation and he was admitted in the hospital for six months and in the end they had to operate him and he came out without his hand oh my god Ah. what a companion what a company now instead of you asking what kind of friends they are what about you what kind of friend are you to them who are faced with fear <laughs> eh? ask your neighbor what kind of friend are you what kind of companion are you are you the one who makes the shock to even shock the shocking kind instead who tells them I don't know what we can do but I know we can seek God and he will do something about it the Bible says and being let go they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them they didn't go drinking they didn't go smoking they didn't go into under the bed and they are crying and they lock the doors and they are crying in there no they looked for people of faith they looked for people who know God they looked for people who will help encourage them in the in the Lord and the Bible says so when they had that they raised their voice to God 
Do you have that kind of company that when they hear that you are going through a problem, they see, say, sister, don't worry. I will stand with you and we are going to pray. Sister, don't worry. I will let us make, can we fast on Wednesday? I am going to fast with you on Wednesday and we are going to call upon the name of the living God. The Bible says, all Judah gathered to seek help from God. What kind of friends do you have? What kind of company do you have? Are they the company that lead you to a witch? Or are they the company that lead you to church? Are they the company that lead you to, no, let us listen to a crazy song? Or are they the company that tell you, you know what? I don't know what we should do, but I think we can just worship the Lord. I think we can just praise God and believe that after our praise, something good will happen. And the Bible says, and when they lifted up their voices to the Lord, go with me to verse 29. You see some of the things that they, they verses 28. They say to do what Whatever your hand and your purpose determine before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they are prayed, tell your neighbor, and when they had prayed... And when they had prayed, the Bible says they, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Meaning all fear was gone. When? When they had prayed. When they had sought God. When they said, instead of giving up, we are going to pray. The Bible says when they had prayed, the boldness came, the wisdom came, the solutions came. What do you do when you are faced with fear? Praise the name of the living God. Tell your neighbor the second strategy is, they, they is, tell them the second effect is divine strategy is divine battle strategy. Let us go to verse 17. Verse 17 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 17. Are you following? Verse 17, not 28. Verse 17. You've typed wrongly. Verse 17. The Bible says, now divine strategy came. By the way, you can read the whole chapter. It was a nice one. You will not need to fight in this battle. Oh. This battle, they did not need to fight. But position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. All Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tell yourself, oh Brian. Tell yourself, oh Brian. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For God is with you. But you see, where did that strategy come from? It came from them making up their mind to seek God. You see, in the place of seeking God, you find divine instructions. You will get an idea. An idea will drop into your spirit. So, this verse is not saying that when you're faced with battle, don't do anything. Because probably some of us, that's what we might think. I don't need to do anything. For God will fight my battles. Hmm? Is it what God has told you? Is, is it what he says? 
you should spend time in the presence of God so as to be led by him so as to receive instruction by him of how to handle this matter otherwise for some of us the moment we are faced with battle some people think it is over and they do nothing no this was an instruction by God go on in the next verse verse 18 and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord worshipping God next verse then the Levites and the children of the Kohites and the children of the Kohites stood up to praise the Lord the God of Israel with voices loud and high meaning those of you who come to church and we are singing at your at the back they were saying praise God for his mercy endures forever oh something good is about to happen victory is on the way before we go to what happened you see when you praise God, this is what happens. You take your eyes off the problem. And you put your eyes to God with whom all things are possible. Because now you cease to talk about the problem. And you talk about the things that God can do and what he can do. Are you here with me? Yes. That is the power of praise. It shifts your attention from the problem and it shifts your attention to the solution maker. To the solution inventor. This is what happens. Psalms chapter 8 and verses 2. You will give me the NIV. Psalms chapter 8 and verse 2. The Bible says, From the lips of children and infants, 
He says, you have ordained praise because of your enemies. Ah, so praise is not just ordained to just praise God for just God. But praise has been ordained as a weapon for us to use because God has enemies. And because God knows that actually the enemy exists. He says he has ordained praise because of our enemies. Meaning the greatest weapon that we have as children of God against the challenges and the enemies that come after us is praise. I said it is praise. To silence the foe and the adventure. Meaning when we praise God, the enemy goes silence. Do you want to silence the attacks of the enemy? Praise God. Do you want to silence the pain? Praise God. Do you want to silence the depression? Praise God. Do you want to silence the stress? Look at them the way they are looking at me. I say, do you want to silence the attacks of the enemy against you? Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. A weapon to silence the enemy. Tell your neighbor, my praise is my God-given weapon to tear down every attack of the enemy. I will praise the Lord and sickness will bow. I will praise the Lord and money will come. My praise is my weapon verse 24 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verses 24 says, says to silence the foe and the avenger meaning it doesn't matter who wants to come after you you can silence them you can silence them and you silence them with praise so when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness they looked towards the multitude and they were dead bodies fallen on the ground. No one had escaped. Wow! They praised God and all the enemies were silenced. When you read the story, the Bible says the enemies started fighting against themselves, among themselves. They pierced themselves. They cut up themselves. They killed themselves. By the time Judah arrived where the problem was, by the time you arrived before the doctor, the doctor is saying, you say, what was it? We don't see the tumor. You, you said, what was it? But your blood is clean. Which hospital did you go to? And they said that you're infected. I said, our God is a miracle-working God. I said, our God is a miracle-working God. But to tap into this miracle-activating power, you need the weapon of praise. Tell your neighbor, I will praise the Lord. In the good times and in the bad times, I will praise the Lord. When everything is working and when nothing is working, I Praise the Lord, for I know this is the secret to victory. This is the secret to my testimony. Tell your neighbor, look at me. A testimony is coming. Look at me. My life is changing. The glory of God is being revealed. Somebody praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? What did they find? Dead bodies. Next verse. Next verse. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, now, now they had things to take with them. Now they had more swords to take with them. 
Now they had more gold to take with them. Now they had spoil that, that they did not have before. Why? Because of the power of praise. They found among them an abundance of valuables. I can tell you, before you know it, you will be in a place of an abundance of valuables in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy over your life that this year 2024 as you praise God as you give thanks you will find yourself where you expected to die where you expected to be destroyed where you expected to be no more instead you will find an abundance as you praise God you will find an abundance of valuables of valuables in the name of Jesus they found an abundance of valuables among dead bodies meaning in undesired places opportunities will open for you I said meaning in undesired places opportunities will break out for you a miracle will happen for you in the name of Jesus you know there are those people who live your life thinking they have left as they have left like Apostle Grace told them and if you're living live are you listening to me there are some who think because they have left Mbu, you're going to be sad. Oh my God, go buy some chicken. Go buy some soda. Sit down, enjoy that drink, and give thanks to God. Ah, give thanks to God. I said, give thanks to God. Oh, man, Telaba. I said, give thanks to God. Sit down and give thanks to God and say, Father, I thank you because a better man is coming my way. A better woman is coming my way. A testimony is coming my way. A better house is coming my way. Better phones are coming my way. Better opportunities are coming my way. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be disappointed and I choose to praise God. I refuse to be disappointed and I choose to give thanks to God. My God, I thank you because all things are working out for my good. What the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for good and you turn it for good. the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good he's a way maker miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God God is who you are way maker way 